The second issue that I see a lot <coughs> happens to do with their base. All right, you'll see this mostly with pitchers. Pitchers naturally have a longer step, step and they're finished, they'll come off their back foot and their back foot will tail off in the air. And they have, eventually sometimes they will come to a natural base, but they get off balance as much, uh, more than they will on a quarterback throw. A lot of coaches have asked, how do I correct this? I actually used to have a similar flaw in my own uh, throwing mechanic, even though I wasn't a baseball player. A lot of quarterbacks naturally come off the ground trying to create power. Two things that can happen when this happens. Number one, if you pick up your back foot, you are transitioning your weight, but you're off balance, right? You can see my shoulders start to lean over to this side. The ball is gonna follow suit, right? The other, time, the other possibility is sometimes I don't actually drive, I'll lock my front knee out, right? I will lock my front knee out and I'll kick my back foot back instead of actually coming through the front knee. The way I combat this is I talk about my quarterbacks dragging their back toe. So if I'm driving off my back foot, right, and I drag my back toe, right, it's gonna bring my hips with me. I have to bring my hips with me to my front leg to transition my weight. But the important thing is I actually have a kickstand that drags with me to keep my shoulders level and keep my weight over my base rather than coming off, uh, coming off of my base. This is actually most helpful with down the field throws, ironically, you would think it would be something short and down the field throws wouldn't matter as much, but it actually happens the further the ball goes in the air because any slight miscalculation here, when you replicate that over, extrapolate it over 30, 40 yards, it's gonna be a big difference. So we will work. Sometimes I'll have a bungee. You can have a bungee or a, a real thin uh, band from the weight room and put it around their waist and hold it behind them. Right, so if I'm being restricted this way, right, and my coach or my other players holding that band, my body feels like I have to really drive out of that to create enough power to throw something down the field. In order to do that, I will gather a lot more weight on the, on the inside of my back leg, which is natural, right? And I will have to drive out. This is where you're dragging your back toe is important, where you can, you can drive off your back foot you drag your back toe so they stay under control while trying to generate more power. And you can have someone stand 30 yards, 40 yards, wherever your target you want it to be. Stand down the field, you can have them stationary, you can have them on the move, and give them a target to hit accurately while they're driving, while being restricted, but controlling their weight. And they have to finish, the whole purpose is to finish in this position where I'm actually have two points of contact on the ground so I'm not like this and I'm not trying to balance my weight while trying to throw. So those are a couple uh, different techniques that I've used and I have a lot of quarterbacks that I've coached over the years that have been baseball players or and then you know made the transition to football or back and forth and I know that's very common in high school. Uh, again these are just two of the things that I've used on two of the common uh, commonalities between those sports and the fundamental differences. Thank you for listening. I appreciate it. I hope you enjoyed this video clinic. Please subscribe to InstaClinic so that you stay connected to this one-of-a-kind football resource.